uh, imagine, um, you know, the, the two lines you're looking at, which is the screw and the blue line, are both on planes that are parallel, and that will define the shortest distance line D. Because remember, if we go back to here, remember D is the shortest distance between the blue and the, and the green, which ends up being, if you think of them both on two parallel planes, it's the distance between the two parallel planes. Okay? So what you do, let me actually teach it from, from this diagram, is if you want to go from the blue to the green, you take your right hand, put your thumb in the direction of D, now D is positive, and you project the, the blue up there, and now you take your right hand, and it defines what theta positive is. It goes from there to there. Okay? It also works if you were to go down from uh, the green to the blue here. Okay, so if you, if you go down, if you start from the green to the blue, now what you do is if you project this down, you draw the green dotted line through there that's parallel to the green. You go with your right hand down there, and the, the, the theta that goes from this green to that, or the projected green to that, would be the positive theta. Okay? Okay, so, so again, going back to our example, now this matters. Okay, so we're seeing here, so... We went from the blue, this is a parallel plane, and there's another parallel plane that the, the green, green one's on. So you can take your right hand, define D as positive here, and then you can see if we project that on there, see this dotted line, that's parallel to the blue line. Now your right hand determines here to here is the positive theta. Okay, and that's obviously bigger than 90 degrees. So you can see here that that distance times tangent of that uh, theta here um, will be, because that's bigger than 90 degrees, tangent of something bigger than 90 degrees is going to be negative, right? Yeah, so, so, so then, then this will actually be a negative pitch, and it will be defined by this one. So th this is positive, tangent greater than 90 degrees, that's negative, so that's a negative value. So if you're thinking of screws with uh, positive and right hand, if it's a negative screw, you would you'd use your left hand now, and you'd expect then that if this translates in this direction, the stage will rotate according to your left hand's fingers because the screw the pitch is negative, and you can hopefully visualize that indeed does, and you can go back and see the animation. If it translates along my left-handed thumb, this constraint will pull it down and force it to rotate in this direction. Okay. If, however, you had done this, and you know, if you were doing a different example and you found this was a positive pitch, then you could visualize how it would move with your right hand, because any screw with a positive pitch is right hand. Translate the arrow, this will tell you what direction it rotates. Okay? But anytime you're determining the positive signs of this, always use your right hand, follow D with your thumb, and then theta with your fingers. Okay? Then again, if it's positive, use your right hand. If the screw's pitch is negative, use your left hand to figure out how the stage r rotates and translates. Okay? So, but th these are, you could get out your ruler and measure this, and your protractor and measure this, plug it in, and you get a negative whatever that value is, and that's exactly what the pitch is. So, this is kind of a cool mechanism, because usually all five would determine the pitch, but because these guys were intersecting perpendicular, they had nothing to say with the final pitch. So, this guy and this guy alone determines that pitch. He's the one that uh, kills the rotation translation, all the other screws, but just allows this single degree of freedom screw with, with whatever pitch to, to exist. So if you wanted to make this a reconfigurable design, you could cause this outer face to extend or contract to increase D to increase the pitch linearly. Okay, So the tan theta would be locked in some finite amount, and so this would be like a constant. And so D could change linearly. Or you could just keep it like there, and if you had some way to change the angle of, of the blue line, uh, then you could change it non-linearly, where tangent, it would change according to tangent uh, theta. Um, so I think a much cleaner design would be obviously, and much easier to implement, would be like a motor that, that, that moves that constraint further out or in, and that would vary the pitch of this to what you want. Okay, so, okay, so, so, um, so now you know what a screw is. I mean, you always did from... Uh, you know, lectures uh, two and, and, and three, really. Well, I guess lecture two was when we really talked about screws, uh, twists with finite pitches. Um, but now you know how to find them using P equals D tan theta for
parallel systems that are using blue constraint lines. Um, and uh, you can see it has its own freedom space because there's, you know, that's a single degree of freedom is a screw. Um, and its constraint space is this crazy guy here, which is basically a mathematical representation of P equals D tan theta, right? And I'll show you how. Let's, let's look at this. Let's zoom in on it. Um, this is one of the most complex constraint spaces, obviously. Um, the ones in the 1DF column are the most complex constraint spaces because, you know, 6 minus 1 is 5. You have five independent, uh, you know, blue pure force wrench vectors, uh, constraint lines that linearly combine to make it the biggest subset of infinity except for the 60F one. It's just a mess and therefore easy to visualize. This one's probably the hardest constraint space to visualize, but it's not that hard, okay? So because you have P equals D tan theta. So think of this. So say you have, say you have the, the screw with a specific pitch of the freedom space. Say you pick a pitch of one, you know, whatever, right? Um, then you gotta ask yourself, well, what, what constraint lines would, would satisfy that pitch? Well, um, if they were a certain distance out, again, take your right hand. You can go from blue to green or green to blue. This time we're going from green to blue. And we're going to go from here to here. That's positive. And you can see this dashed line is a projected of, of the green on there. And so the skew angle would be theta. And it would be defined with your right hand from there to there as positive. Okay, so say you, you pick a pitch. And then that sets whatever that D and theta are. Okay? Okay. Uh, well, uh, pick, a, pick a random D, like 1 or something. Well, then that sets what theta is. You, you, I gave you the pitch. I gave you the D. You can solve for the theta. Okay? But now think about it. Isn't it true that every blue line, if I took this and rotated the blue line about the screw, it would make a circular hyperboloid? Okay? And wouldn't it be true that every blue line on that circular hyperboloid would have the same D and the same theta? This was like before we had a line here and we said alpha. Well, this is theta from the vertical. It's kind of the same thing, right? So, so, so but that, th this is how it would have to satisfy P equals D tan theta. But anyway, the point is every single blue line on that circular hyperboloid would have the same D and the same theta. And so, therefore, they would satisfy the same pitch. Okay, so, but then, then what happens if you allow, so, so keep the pitch the same, say it's one, but now you allow D to be smaller, okay? What would that do to theta? Well, if D is smaller, then theta needs to get larger, right, to, to, uh, to make pitch stay the same. So you could imagine D gets smaller, theta gets larger, it, it tilts that way, and then if you rotate that one, Every circular hyperboloid would satisfy that same pitch, till finally 